Hello world and welcome to my channel. I'm bound to be coding. Today I want to give an update on my game, A Struggle to Survive, and I want to show you a couple of things that I have developed recently, and I want to get your take on it. Um, sometimes developers have ideas about things and they just need some second pair of eyes, if you will, to look it over and to give feedback and this this feedback is very very important to developers uh, to understand if they're heading in the right direction or if they are totally out in left field I know that there are things in this game that I'm working on that I've implemented that I personally like but the big question is if I was to release this game if I was to make it available would people play it would people enjoy the game that I've made and in order to determine that I need to know if I'm heading in the right direction and so I need feedback and so this video I'm going in this video I'm going to show you a couple of new things that I've made in my game and I'm asking you to um, give me feedback leave comments uh, tell me if I'm going in the right direction or if this is just totally wrong it just doesn't doesn't appeal to you. So what I've been working on lately is a um, object action system and I did highlight this system in a couple of videos, recent videos. You can check my channel, the object action system. I have two videos so far on that system and uh, basically it's a system that allows me to click on an object in the game or in the, I have another feature which is my key commands or access the object action system via the key commands and essentially click on an object and get presented with several possible interactions actions that I can do or perform against that object and this has become a building foundation for many things in my game and it will continue to, I mean, this is a core engine, a core feature of my game, and uh, I am very pleased with how um, how it's working and how how it's coming together to allow me to be creative and to create things in the game. So let me show you what I've been working on. I I want to start with a campfire. Uh, what survival game doesn't start with making fire, right? Making a campfire. And uh, this game will be no different. So step one is just clearing clearing the spot. I'm going to add some stones. I have loaded my inventory with some items that I'll need. Not all the items because I can't actually carry everything that I'm going to be needing for this um, demonstration. Uh, but I do have enough to make the campfire and I want to introduce you to that. Alright, so let me add some stones. It takes 10 stones to make the campfire ring. And uh, so the next step in this process would be um, I could add some kindling or I could add a cooking stone. A cooking stone is going to be used for um, allow the player to fry food and there are other things that the player is going to be able to do and the cooking stone is going to be an important uh, tool in the campfire. Now the campfire can hold or excuse me the campfire can can have several structures placed over top of it depending upon what the what the player wants to um, cook or prepare. For example, the tripod can be used to boil water and cook soups and stews and things like that. The spit is used for roasting. So you catch a rabbit and you want to roast it over the fire, you can use the spit for that purpose. The third structure that can sit over top of the campfire is the drying rack. And the drying rack is used to dry meat uh, or um, fruit or other things, anything really that needs to be dried and preserved, 
the drying rack can be used for that purpose. I'm going to put up the drying rack and I'll show you what that looks like. So in order to do that, I need four branches and one long stick and two cordage. So I have two branches, so I need a couple more branches. There's one. And there's two, so I now have four. So we'll put up the um, drying rack. All right, so the drying rack is now available. There's another uh, thing I need to do, and that would be to light the fire. Now, in order to light the fire, I have to have some kindling. And I do have one kindling here in my inventory, so let me drop that in. And once I have the kindling in place, I can light the fire. Off to the right here, you see that there's a small little campfire wood pile. And this is how you fuel the, the campfire, by placing wood items, combustible items, into, the, into this container. And, and then you can, once it's in the container and you've lit the fire, you can then, there'll be an option down here. These are the commands. Um, to feed the fire. So let's go ahead and we've got some kindling. Let's go ahead and light it. All right, so we've got we've got the fire lit. It's just barely. We need to feed it. So let's drop some. These are some small, or excuse me, short sticks. Let's go ahead and now you see that we, we can stoke the fire with the sticks. Let's do that. All right, so we've got about four hours and 11 or so minutes of burn time here on the campfire. It looks to be about 30 some percent fueled. We can add some more fuel. We can also add, we can add short sticks. We can add um, long sticks and, or we could and I'm just trying to show you some extra little things that I've been working on. Um, we can break these sticks. And this is all using the object action system to implement actions against objects. So the stick is an object, and these are the actions. So let's uh, we'll drop some more of these, and we'll just throw this in. Let's just throw it all in, and let's try to, try to fill it up. All right, so we're at about 10 hours, a little, little less than 11 hours there. Um, and you can see that the, uh, the fire's going. We're all set. What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk around, and I'm going to do some just looking around on the ground, checking to see if there's any items that I can pick up off the ground. And we got a couple of long sticks there and a short stick. <clears throat> these tiles, all of these tiles, are um, have content, potentially uh, have forgeable content. And when the world is generated, uh, basically the, I randomize the objects that can be picked up from the various tiles, and it's based on the tile type, uh, which is what you see here when I'm walking around. So this is a mixed forest. It has a, a mix of different kinds of trees, um, conifer trees and deciduous trees. And so you can walk through, but as you go through and you grab items off the ground that you find, that spot has been basically uh, foraged. And so you're not going to find anything else on that spot until the reset and I believe what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it to where every morning it'll reset so that you can go out and look and see if you can find something else that you might need. Now what I'm going to do here is drop some of this fuel. I can even burn my my kindling. All right. So there's the campfire. The um, drying rack has a slot, a container with a slot that you can drop meat into or whatever and that you need to dry and it will dry. I haven't 
added it, but I do have all the graphics done. All of this, uh, all of this was uh, hand drawn. I had real, I had a lot of fun making these, making these uh, graphical assets for the game. But the drying rack has a has a container that you can drop meat into or whatever to dry. The cooking rock also has um, a inventory window that allows you to cook and I'm not sure yet how I'm gonna do this I, this might end up just becoming like a really nice uh, recipe system I don't know yet I have this concept of uh, handcrafting where you drop in materials and tools you perform the work and you get the result and you can drop that into a container um, I'm not sure yet how I'm going to implement this and how I'm going to incorporate cooking. We'll see. I, I'm not really sure yet. But anyway, the idea is that if I want to cook some food, I can open up, um, basically access this, the cooking stone here, load it up with food, and then it will then begin to cook the food as the fire provides the heat. Okay, so let me move on to the next structure that I have built and add it to the game. Once you have a fire, you've got to have a place to sleep. So, um, the reason that that completely appeared is because earlier today I was doing some troubleshooting and I set the state machine on my lean to to step four which means that the lean to is complete so you didn't get to see the steps I want to show you the steps so bear with me a second I'm going to stop that and I'm gonna restart the game and we will give this another shot now, of course I'm in a new world a random generated world I want to pick a good spot. Okay, let's uh, let's go here. <laughs> well, I guess I need to fix my step in my code, don't I? Uh, let's see. Let me go to the lean to, and we do not want to make step four finished. So this is, uh, yeah, this is my simple state machine. Very, very, very simple. Simplistic, just works, walks through the steps as the player builds out the lean-to. But I want to show you that build out. So let me do that. Videos never go the way you want, and... I can't tell you how many times I have completely restarted videos 15, 20, 30 minutes in and I blunder or something happens and I get frustrated that it is not uh, working the way I want so I kill it and I start over. I can't tell you how many times I've done that. I'm not doing that today. I really want to work on my game and I also want to provide you with... Um, a demonstration of the features that I'm working on there's the the mini map I don't think I've shown this except for on my blog um, nice little mini map that lets you that lets you uh, get a sense of where you are in the world I can see some trees over here so I'm just gonna head over there and Okay, another mixed forest, and of course he can walk on water right now because I haven't coded depth. I have coded the depth of the water, but he doesn't, he's not aware of it yet. All right. All right, this looks okay. All right, let's give this another shot. I'll build a campfire.
Well, I guess since I'm redoing this, I'll show you a different frame. Let's show you the spit. Okay, there's the spit for roasting. Just drop these in. There's my pocket watch. Got to have that. In this game, if you do not buy a pocket watch when you are in St. Louis, the game will put you, at the beginning of the game, you'll start in St. Louis. You'll buy your supplies, and then you will trek out to the Rocky Mountains. If you don't buy a pocket watch, then you will only know relative time. And it'll show up here. This is the afternoon. But you will not know the specific time because, well, how can you know the specific time during the day? You can during the night by looking at the stars. But during the day, you're just going to have to guess based on the position of the sun. And this will provide you with that type of information. But to the minute time, you will not have unless you have a pocket watch. In your inventory anyway uh, let's see I want to go ahead and let's go ahead and get this fire going <clears throat> fires always add nice ambience to a game and when you're out in the Rocky Mountains in 1820 you need a fire you need to be able to keep yourself warm and fed and that fire is going to help you do that all right now we're gonna do the lean-to First off, you clear your spot. Once you clear your spot, it will tell you uh, what you need to do. So the next step is creating a basic frame. I need five branches and two cordage. I don't have, I have the cordage, but I don't have the branches. So get the branches from deciduous trees. So let's grab them. There's three. Let's look at this cottonwood. Cottonwood trees provide, cottonwood and oak provide a lot of uh, branches. Oh, yeah, we got plenty now. All right, so let's go ahead. All right, so I fashioned a basic frame from, for the lean to. Took me half an hour. You can see the clock advancing as I work on my lean to here. Okay, so there's the there's that. Let's look and let's see what the next step is. Complete the frame. I need six branches, ten cordage. I've got my cordage. I need six branches, six more branches. I know I know this oak tree doesn't have any more because I, I pulled off and I pulled off from that guy. Yes, all the trees have different um, amounts of resources and I have to go around and try to find a tree that has what I'm looking for. This oak has some branches. Four. Now let's see. Let's go over here to this little maple. Oh, an oak tree's got some. And that's six. I'm going to grab some more. I believe. Sometimes it's hard to keep track. I, as I work on this, I change things a hundred times before I'm I'm ready to say, okay, this is good. This feature is done. And when it's when I started out with this, the uh, the second step took like eight or so um, branches. Okay, so <clears throat> here we are. We have our frame. It's all framed up. And now what we need to do is put a covering on it. So we're going to attach the boughs. Last step requires eight boughs. All right. So I'm going to drop this guy. I'm going to create a what's called a brush pile with, uh, with this. So here we are. We have a brush pile. And I've placed the branch inside the pile. I can put all kinds of sticks and limbs in there and it's just a, a nice portable 
our storage by just dropping stuff on the ground. You can create extra storage. This storage, however, is limited to, to only uh, wood products. You can't, can't put anything that isn't part of a brush pile, what you would consider a brush pile. Okay, so we need eight bow, I believe. Yep, now we get bow from cedar trees and other coniferous trees. Okay, that one was infested with bugs, so I can't use it. Okay, I got another one. All right, let's uh, let's keep going here. I don't think a couple of days ago, yeah, I th I think I didn't reset that. A couple of days ago, I um, I had set up, I had removed the ability to collect boughs from pine trees because I thought, well. There's so many trees that have boughs. I don't necessarily have to give all the trees boughs, all of the the uh, coniferous trees boughs. But here in the the mixed this uh, this mixed forest, there are only two trees where I could possibly get boughs from. The rest I get branches from. So the deciduous provide branches. And then when I was testing, I realized, you know what? These pine trees, um, when it's, now this, this happens to be, I happen to have a lot of cedar here. But if I didn't have a lot of cedar, I'd be in trouble. I'd have to go pretty far off to get, get some boughs. And so I believe I'm going to put those back. What do you think? Should I allow the pine trees to contain bough or to have boughs that can be harvested for the purpose of creating um you know, structures with it or not. These are the kinds of decisions that I would love to have feedback on as you watch this. It's force five. I've got to have eight. So let's just uh, keep going. Oh, here we go. And we'll get this guy. See you. Well, this far seems to have, okay, four, five, six, seven. I am close to my eight. Originally, I had it set up where these, this, would re this step would require 12. 12 is challenging because the backpack can only hold about 10. So that leaves the player with actually carrying the bows in, in his hands. So, which, which, you know, can do that. Now, if you're wondering why I am, I am being so um, skin flinty about inventory, is because um, I, I honestly think that simulating the the management of what you're carrying in the context of surviving in the Rocky Mountains in 1820 fits. It makes sense. I mean, this isn't, you know, this isn't an MMO. This isn't um, an RPG where you can have 50,000 items in your inventory. No, this is, you know, you've got to manage things. You've got to manage weight and, um, you know, volume. Okay, I've got my eight. And where was I? So I was down here somewhere. Let's see, I was down here um, you've got to manage those things and I think it only makes sense that I do that and look what happened to my fire while I was gone I uh, it's gonna take a little bit to put these bows on I don't want my fire to go out so let me just just grab some wood real quick just picking up sticks off the ground, there's another decision I made. I did have it where you could you would go up to trees and you could get just like with branches you could get large or long sticks and short sticks. And then I thought, well, if you're in a forest and you're walking around, you'll probably find a lot of sticks laying on the ground. So I felt like it made more sense to provide the harvesting of 
long sticks and short sticks by grabbing them off the ground rather than, you know, pulling or breaking them off of trees. What do you think about that decision? I like it. I think it adds purpose to uh, foraging on the ground for various things. I'm just going to, oh, I'm going to drop these sticks in because I, I do not want my fire to go out while I am. Okay, burn for six hours. I don't believe it will take that long to put the boughs on. Okay, attach the boughs to the frame to complete the lean-to. Okay, it only took an hour, so good shape. Okay, so the lean-to provides you with storage. It also provides you with shelter. So you'll be able to go to sleep in the lean-to, and you'll, you'll be able to uh, have a very generous... Um, container for storing items and so for those of you that haven't seen my video on my inventory system um, my inventory system is different than a lot of what you typically see what you typically see is all the, the same size slots I wanted it to be different I wanted it to be um, uh, uh, well just I guess different and so I en ended up coming up with uh, small slots, medium slots, and large slots, and the ability to drag and drop items. These are all, you know, just containers in my inventory system, items and containers, and so uh, the ability to do that is, Im is important to me. So uh, to have various, or to have an inventory system that's interesting and not just, you know, uh, this big 50 pound item can fit in the same slot that a, a one pound item can fit in it it uh, it didn't seem real to me or, or simulate enough reality to me so it's not complete reality but it is uh, simulated enough that I feel comfortable with it and I like it uh, having the ability to have uh, different size slots and this is all my inventory system this is all configurable I have a JSON file that I, that basically establishes the slots, the number of columns, and the uh, the slot counts for each of the slot sizes for each type of container. This is a backpack, and so the backpack contains four medium slots, three, six, nine, twelve small slots, and no large slots. The backpack itself is a lar fits in a large slot. So, and then of course in my inventory, and I don't know why I'm rambling. I do this all the time. I guess I just want to share with you what I've been working on. Um, it, you have information about this container called Backpack, and it has 14 empty slots. It, it weighs 2.98 pounds. It, the total weight with the items inside is 3.42. Um, there's a, I have a, uh, a system that works with a unit called a solid unit. And solid unit is a way to identify or, or to um, capture volume. And so I use volume coupled with slots to manage inventory, manage containers and what they can carry and what they can't carry, you know, and things like that. All right. So we have uh, two, more, two more things I want to show you real quick. Uh, I have an ash sack here. And as you can imagine, the um, don't have anything in my wood pile. I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to stomp this guy uh, to snuff out the fire. Um, I can do this if the fire is low enough. If it's too big, then I can't stomp it. I'd have to throw dirt on it or or water. Um, but I think I can stomp it. Yeah. So you stomp out the fire. Uh, you stomp on the fire. Okay, it's, you notice it went down. It's still still burning there. Let me hit it again. A little bit left. I haven't tested this. Oh, I think I have a bug. Yeah, I haven't tested this in days. I've been working on the lean to. Oh, well, I was going to show you the... Um, well, wait a minute. This might be a refresh bug. Hold on a sec. Ah, oh, yes. Yes. Refresh bug. So every time something happens in the object action system, 
uh, I need to advance the world clock. I need to refresh the view because my my uh, my tile map gets refreshed every time. Every single thing in the scene gets rebuilt. How fast is that? Oh, it's fast. Like, really fast. Like, that refreshed the screen and redrew every single thing you see. That redrew everything you saw, you see on the screen. Doesn't look like it. The eye doesn't see it because Godot is so blazingly fast. Love Godot. Uh, anyway, all right. So here, here in the the campfire. Oh, you notice it's got it's it's still still got some embers burning, which means I got to hit it again. No, no, that might, well, let's see. Yeah, I do have a bug. I'm sorry. I can't show you that. But anyway, what would happen is, you can imagine it with me, and I'll add this to my, my bug list. Um, you can imagine that the uh, stomping leaves ashes. And you can see the ashes there. It's just that the ashes are too hot for me to pick up. So once, once that goes out, then I'll be able to, there'll be an option in the object action. This is the act, this is the object, this, these are the actions. There'll be an action for collecting the ash, and I can put the ash inside this ash sack and keep it there. Okay, this video has run probably three times longer than I intended. I apologize for my rambling, but I hope that uh, I've given you some, um, uh, look into my game and how it's being made and I really would appreciate your feedback what do you think am I heading in the right direction with this single player 2d survival game or are these steps um, in your estimation unnecessary and you know just I want your feedback I really truly want your feedback um, and so what I'm going to do now is, uh, before I sign off, is I'm going to go to sleep. And I think I'll sleep. Let's see, it's quarter after 10. It's late at night. I'm going to sleep for, oh, I'll do six hours. I'll sleep for six hours. Waking up refreshed. I slept for six hours. The clock advanced. And that little fire is still burning. <laughs> I got to fix that bug. Anyway, <clears throat> thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Please leave feedback. Uh, if you like what you see and you want to follow along, I, I politely ask you to subscribe to the channel. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it very much. Thank you for your time. Until next time, I'm bound to be coding.